Recently, I was doom scrolling Alibaba when I found a company who specializes in semi solid state batteries for UAVs, with some models apparently reaching up to 400 watt hours per kilogram. That's more than the newest smartphones and electric cars, and certainly way more than what hobbyists can usually buy, so I had to see what was up. If you're unsure what semi-solid state batteries are, they're a type of battery which is supposedly safer, stores more energy for the same weight, and can release this energy quicker than traditional liquid electrolyte batteries. While they're not quite at the safety and performance levels of all solid state batteries which are yet to escape the lab due to a number of technical and non-technical issues, the fact that some of the electrolyte is solid does help to reduce the risk of thermal runaway, while the liquid component helps to keep manufacturing processes more compatible with existing systems. Nowadays though, this sort of terminology is more so used for marketing and to pay the bills of commentary YouTubers, so it'll be interesting to see today whether this semi-solid state battery pack I bought for 50 bucks actually holds up to its claims. It was in storage for about 11 weeks before making this video, and during that period, there was only a self-discharge of about 7 millivolts per cell, or less than 0.5%, which reflects the good manufacturing quality we should expect from batteries at this relatively high price point, and hints towards potential applications to extend runtime in phones, laptops, power stations, and IoT devices where every little parasitic drain counts. To know that for sure though, we need to measure energy density, so I put together this adapter with my brain surgeon-like soldering prowess since my equipment couldn't handle the whole pack, and then started charging one of the cells to an end voltage of 4.45 volts. What chemical changes allow for this improvement? I can't say for sure. But the approach looks similar to today's silicon carbon anode smartphone batteries which charge to high voltages, use high nickel cathodes, and add a little bit of silicon into the anode to give that last boost into the 300 watt hour per kilogram range. Near the end of the charge, I ultimately couldn't meet the spec recommendations on termination current though, so the last few percent wouldn't have been put in. Let's see how that affects the discharge energy tests. What we should be expecting here is a capacity of 2.8 amp hours at a nominal voltage of 3.95 volts, higher than any other commercial lithium ion cell I've seen. Given the fact that each of the cells in this 9S pack should weigh around 31 grams, the rated energy density is just short of 360 watt hours per kilogram. The specs recommend a discharge cutoff of 3.35 volts, which makes regulation to logic levels for embedded devices simpler. And what the heck? Why is 30% of the energy just oh, missing? No. Really? Well, turns out, since the cell expects to be used in a device which can draw very high power bursts, although these claims are a bit outlandish and I'd be curious to test them sometime with better equipment, a conservative discharge cutoff is recommended to help preserve cycle life. If we use a low current though, we can claim some more energy down to 2.95 volts, putting the final effective energy density at about 300 watt hours per kilogram, taking into account the resistance of the wires and the charge cycle being cut short, meaning the shortfall is only 15%. If we went further, we could expect the full capacity to be delivered, but according to the manufacturer, this could drop cycle life rapidly, even at tiny currents, so it's never done in actual use, and this is why I think that 360 watt hours per kilogram is an unfair claim. Does this mean that the supplier is unreliable and these are bad cells though? Absolutely not. They still almost double runtime compared to the lipos hobbyists are commonly using. Plus, cycle life looks great, charging speed looks great, safety looks promising, and anyone can buy these cells individually with nickel-plated tabs or in custom packs on request for very affordable prices. Whether they're truly semi-solid state or not, I have no clue. But the sensitive storage requirements and current limits dependent on state of charge tell us this is no ordinary lithium-ion battery. So as always, make sure to pay close attention to the specs if you're looking at using this tech yourself. Overall, while it might not be as exciting as other new battery technologies, semi-solid state is a proven way forward. Even through all the marketing abuse, which will oftentimes massively overstate the proportion of solid electrolyte, the general trend is that the amount of flammable liquid electrolyte in our lithium ion cells is going down, and that's something to be happy for in my books. Commercially available batteries do get more energy dense than this, 
but it's unclear how much safety suffers, so fully charged puncture comparisons and other stress tests would be cool to do in the future. But I would need more expensive equipment and additional cells to do that, which you can help me fund by commenting your thoughts on this video down below to boost the algorithm. Stepping back for a second, a lot of what I just went through here isn't about memorizing specs. It's about reasoning through trade-offs, spotting misleading claims, and building intuition. And one of the best ways to improve problem-solving skills and mental clarity to better equip for such engineering challenges is through this video's sponsor, Brilliant. So instead of watching hours of short-form content in my free time, I can have fun learning about how AI works through visual interactive tasks that help me build genuine understanding through active problem-solving a method that research has shown to be a lot more effective than watching lectures. Brilliant has a perfect mix of interactive problems, motivating challenges, and encouragement to keep you moving forward, starting at the right level based on your background, designing practice sets and reviews personalized for you, and helping you advance at your ideal pace to reach serious learning goals. It's crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Harvard, Google, and more, getting you hands-on with math and computer science concepts until they make sense. To learn for free on Brilliant for a full 30 days, go to brilliant.org slash hasindustries, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to all the learning content there. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and it provided you some value. I'm currently in the process of designing a 240 watt USB-C power bank around this semi-solid state battery. So make sure to subscribe and hit those other buttons below so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.